It's the KSO Show. I'm Derek Young, joined by Green Flanders, as always, and we're going to discuss the final position preview of the offseason, and you'll probably be hearing this on Tuesday, I'm guessing. So if you're listening to this on Tuesday, as I'm planning it at the moment, it's only four days from the college football season kickoff, at least for Kansas State. Obviously, other games have already transpired. Sorry, Nebraska, as you were already tripped up. Whoops. By Illinois. Oopsie daisies. Okay. Time for the Kansas State quarterbacks. You know, right off the top, probably should talk about Julius Brents, perhaps. You know, he's the, obviously, in case you may have been hiding under the pillow for the last eight months, he's perhaps, the, tr the transfer from Iowa is perhaps the best player on the defensive side of the ball already for the Wildcats. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't think, and <laughs> that's right after yesterday, we just got, if you listen to the defensive tackles, episode just got done talking about a guy like Timmy Horn who could also be in that discussion but I do believe Julius Brents is the best player on the defense we'll see if it is true you know he's been hyped up the guy from Iowa has been hyped up since coming out of Iowa as a guy that's a future NFLer you know he wasn't happy with the situation there so K-State got to get him to come to Manhattan yep and he's worked out great you know from the start big uh, dude What's that? Big dude. Big six, dude. Six foot yep. three. Six yep. foot three, long, rangy, athlete, athletic. You know, there's not many, um, there's not really any weaknesses I can point out for Brents, at least until I see him play, that make, I can't think of one. He's tall, he's long, he's fast, he can keep up with guys. Um, he's just a really good player to have on your outside, guarding, you know, the toughest uh, wide receivers in the league. Um, and... It's funny because I think he's he's one of many on the on that in that group. Yeah, uh, I, three things come to mind for me. One, yep. um, there's probably not a past Kansas State player, at least recently, that we can really compare him to because six foot three corners are pretty freaking rare on almost any institution. But you know, it's a, a, especially Kansas State. Even they they've had some pretty good defensive backs come out of Kansas State even the past few years. Even when Bill Snyder was the coach, just recently, you know, even DJ Reed we saw drafted. Um, Duke Shelley, we saw drafted, but both of those guys were under five foot ten. Oh. This dude six foot three. Another item, and I think it's worthy of discussion. Although if he's as good as we think he is, it, it may not matter. He has three years of eligibility remaining. It's not just <laughs> this scary. year, but he has three years. So two more after this season if he chooses to exercise um, those uh, additional seasons. And then third is maybe the most important is I think he's going to create additional opportunities. For Echo Boydo on the other side of the field. Um, they were going through some things last year as a team on the defensive side of the ball. A lot of attrition, a lot of messiness, COVID-19, everything. And Echo Boydo didn't really have always have an elite counterpart on the other side of the field, especially when A.J. Parker was moved permanently to the nickel position. And so Echo Boydo never really got challenged. Now he's probably going to be the one that is challenged if Julius Brintz is everything he's cracked up to be. Which, if that's the case, then I think Echo Boydo is probably going to be able to be even more of a playmaker this season. And that could be exciting because he was a guy last season that showed that he could be an instant factor. Um, because the reason people, yeah, like you said, they didn't go towards him was because he was good. Mm -hmm. Really the only really good outside defender that they had because Parker was on the inside. So it does make it, I think, easier um, but also harder for Echo. It's funny how that works because if Brents is that good, they're going to have to go towards someone. Echo's that guy most likely, but good chance that Echo's got his guy draped up too. So it, the secondary, this, this cornerback room could be really good just based on those two guys at the top, not to mention two guys behind them and Justin Gardner and uh, guys like uh, T. Denson. T. Denson, and, yep, yep. Guys that, I th another, Gardner's another tall a uh, little not, slower. Yeah. yeah, a little slower. Not the athlete that Brents is, obviously, or else we'd be talking about him more too, but he's a guy that you like to have as a depth piece behind guys like Brents and Echo. Yeah, that'll be entertaining because mm -hmm. I, I, I imagine at some point we'll see the, the corners on the field together just because, you know, the way they rotate or, yep. or circumstance. At uh, one time we could have – Brents and Justin Gardner on the field together. You get two six foot three corners. That's pretty rare. Mm -hmm. that, there's a chance that that could happen. Um, yeah, Echo Boydo. He's he was my defensive MVP when they asked me on the on the Bosco's Boys mm -hmm. podcast. And obviously, you could go a lot of ways for a defensive MVP, but I picked him because I think he's really really good. 
And I think he's going to be targeted and challenged more than he was last year, which would present additional opportunities for him. I think that's a good pick. Yeah. Because um, I, I went with Brents. I think it's one of those two because they're both really, really good corners. Unless, unless Daniel Green. We'll yeah, see. you know, that's, he's, he's important. that's a good point. He's very important. He's going to be key. Mm -hmm. um, but it is exciting to see two. Like, that's the thing. Brents has gotten all the love this offseason, but we can't forget the potential that Echo Boy does, does have. Yeah, and we probably – I'm not saying we should uh, pump the brakes on Julius Brents because I think he is going to be the real deal, but it's interesting yeah. that we're basically crowning him already. We have yet to see him really play <laughs> a lot true. of college football. Yeah. He played four games at Iowa, I think. So it's a little different in that capacity. Um, if there was only one of them out there, we would be debating hard. Who do we go with, uh, Echo Boy or Brents? But luckily, they're both starters. It's not a big deal. Yeah, and then I guess – we could probably go with the Nichols in this, too. Yeah. We talked about Gardner. Yeah, to, right? T. Denson's going to play this year, obviously, a corner. But the, but the Nichols, and we already touched on them when we did linebackers. Sure, we the bigger Reggie Stubble, too. He was a good corner. Or, or, yeah, he's, gonna, he's not going to play corner. He's going to play nickel. Yeah. But the, so they do have some heavier Nichols, but we kind of grouped them in with the linebackers uh -huh. already, and that was Wayne Jones and, and Ryan Hennington. But most often, and we, especially when you get into the thick of the Big 12 season, your Nichols are likely to be a Morris Brown and Reggie Stubble field. Um, it sounds like maybe Brown will be the guy, but maybe that's still to be determined uh, in terms of who starts between he and Stubblefield. I would just go with Brown because I think he was already a nickel before they moved Stubblefield there. Stubblefield, first few, first few practices was exclusively a corner. Now he's playing nickel. And I think Brown does bring, and they've mentioned how they like this about him, a little more athleticism and length at that position, um, where Stubblefield brings more experience, um, still a solid skilled player for that you know nickel spot that you need um, speed and everything else on that but I do think Brown brings a little bit more potential physically than Stubblefield does yeah I, it'll be a tough battle between the two and we probably won't necessarily maybe see who's starting amongst those two until we get to the Southern Illinois game just because Stanford's yeah. offense poses such a different kind of challenge that I think the personnel groupings will be much different in that game versus the rest of the year we we'll probably do have one more KSO show for a season preview to do, and we'll probably give our Big 12 predictions in terms of 1 through 10. We'll give, maybe give our Kansas State records and kind of what we think about certain games, but that'll be our last one. And when you hear us next, that'll probably be um, what you hear, actually. <laughs> so for, for Great Flaters, I'm, I'm Derek Young. You've been listening to the KSO show. Until your friends.